Hello everyone, this is Jeff, and I wanted to come to you with part two of the three-way mini cocktail arcade. Um, I'm not going to talk about it too much right here because I've got a lot of video following this. I've already recorded it, and I go into great detail, uh, quite a bit of detail anyway, of the electronics of the three-way cocktail. So without further ado, I will uh, get to part two. All right, guys. Um, here's the first part I'm going to show you. I um, went ahead and paused because I wanted to explain this stuff a little bit more in detail. I've had some requests for that. Uh, some of the stuff that I've kind of known how to do for a while, just in various jobs that I've had, um, isn't really second nature to some people. So I wanted to go ahead and slow down a little bit. If you know uh, some of these things, uh, you know you can just skip through or just um, you know bear with me maybe learn a little bit of something but some people don't know how to do the electrical parts here uh, what I wanted to show you um, of course is uh, this is the power supply right here okay so what that looks like before I get it in there is basically this okay this is a power supply right here uh, let's see if I can zoom in on that at all Right, so the MD9916A, this is a 16 amp, right? So you've got your 12 volt at the top, minus 5 volt, then you've got two grounds, you've got a plus 5 volt, then you've got an FG, AC, AC. Okay, so what you've got here is basically for us, the Arcade SD, um, most boards out there these days, right? So there's the Arcade SD right there inside. Um, the, the hot will go to the plus 5 volts right there, okay? And then the ground, of course, will go to the ground, right? Which is the GND, one of those two grounds. You've got two spots to put it on. The minus 5 volts, I haven't come across anything where I need that. Some of the... Um, older boards, uh, things that I've heard of will need the minus 5 volts, but we won't be using that. And the plus 12 volts really is, uh, I only use that for light up buttons. So if you want light up buttons, um, you would run it uh, the to the plus 12 volts so that you can get your lights. And then the bottom two, or the bottom three, is you've got AC, AC, and FG. Your FG is your ground that comes off of a regular uh, Let's see. Right, you got your regular plug, and you've got three prongs. This is your 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 ground for the FG, and then these two are the two ACs. Um, you don't really it doesn't really matter which is which. Um, you know, AC to AC uh, for these two. So that's what it looks like. So what I do is I just basically take the screws off of here. There's some screws on the on the bottom there. You can see some of those screws. And basically, I just take the whole thing apart uh, because it's just kind of bulky like that. So then what it ends up with is basically these are the guts. And then I go in and I put in three screws because you end up with three holes. And I got these three screws right there. One, two, and three. And... Um, let me see if I can find this real quick. I know this is going to end up being a little longer, but I think it's going to be good because I'm going to get a little more detailed. So these standoffs for the boards, any of these circuit boards, you buy, you can buy these little standoffs. Well, you can screw this in and then you can put a screw in through. But what I do is I actually just uh, trim that whole thing off and I only use this part right here. So I don't know if you can see that right there, right? But I just trimmed it off because all I want is just a little bit of separation because I want to keep this as low profile as possible, right? So there's three spots for that, and it really keeps it in there nice and snug. And then what I do is I just, just for myself and my sake, I just write these out so that I know what's what, right? So you got the power supply right here. Right, which is obviously um, this is just a regular PC power supply, right? So you take a regular uh, computer cable and you can plug in this side, and then you know you plug in the other side to 
your um, whatever electrical outlet you have. All right. So then on this side, over here, you've got ground, right? That's your FG ground right there. And then you've got your two ACs right there, one and two. So what I do is I just take a regular PC cable, right? You can use any cable you want, um, any electrical cable that has three. That green one in the middle is always the FG ground. That's your extra ground. You don't actually have that, but it's you know it's very good to have extra grounding, and everything these days almost has extra grounds. So you would just put that on here, right? And these I, I, I clipped these on. Basically, these are these little terminals right here. You can get them at Ace. You can get them at Home Depot. You can get them all over the place, right? And uh, hold on one second. Let me pull one out. It's hard to do this with one hand, but that's what it looks like. Right, so then you just slide in the in the in the cable, and then you take this little thing that kind of comes with it. If you buy a little kit, you can buy a little uh, kit. I had originally bought one, and you'll see up there, the standards are red, blue, and yellow. You'll see some red ones here later on, but the blue, you just crimp that down right over top of the spot, and then not the very end, but right there. In between the end and to the metal part, you crimp that down once the wire's in, and you crimp it really hard, and it's it's good to go. So then, what I end up doing is I'll plug these in real quick. You can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so you can just see the finished product, and those are on there nice. Okay, those are on there pretty nice. And then what I do is. I just strip the ends here. Then I take what we've got here is the other part of the PC. Now this is going to go to the monitor, right? So this brings in power to the power supply. This power supply will convert your your power to 5 volts and 12 volts depending on where you plug it in. If you plug it in here well this is where the full 110 power comes in which is where this comes in well what I do is I just splice these together right here green to green AC to AC, AC to AC and when I take those and then I stick them right in here one two three screw them down make them nice and tight so then that way the power that I need for the monitor which is 110 because it's got its own little power converter inside of it It'll come in, the power comes in here, and then the power leaves through this cable, right? Goes to the end, and then I can plug it into the monitor. So then I have power to the monitor, and I have power to this power supply, which in turn, these two cables that come off of the JAMA harness. So I'll try to follow those back. But basically, this is the JAMA harness, and you've got a main, these are always bigger on these JAMA harnesses. There's you've got your red and there you've got your black for hot and cold. And that's it. That's the power that goes to the JAMA harness. And then after that everything is powered through the JAMA harness. All the power goes in and it comes out of the board. So that's the power part. I wanted to show you that. Okay here's the next phase I wanted to document. Um, so as you know there's three control panels but um, as you come out of the JAMA harness here you've only got uh, you know one wire that would normally go to uh, player one but uh, what you can see here is uh, over here is this is player one joystick and fire and jump let's call it whatever player one uh, uh, what do they call it on here basically fire button one fire button two and then over here you've got the uh, player two and the player two fire button one and fire button two and so then on this side you've also got player one and player two now the way the um, multi Williams is set up on the arcade SD and uh, and other boards I believe um, is that even though Defender uses like, you know, 
five buttons and Stargate uses six buttons, which would be like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one control. Well, you don't have to have player one, two, three, four, five, six. What it uses is player one, fire button one, fire, oh boy, I, uh, let's see. Okay, so blue is fire button one, fire button two is purple, and this gray is fire button three. Then you've got your player two joystick, and then you've got blue, fire fire button one put for player two, fire button two for player two, and gray is fire button three for player two. Right? So really it's only three fire buttons that are wired, but the board knows per game what buttons to use. If that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, uh, you know, let me know. I'll try to explain it a little better, but hopefully that makes sense. So what I had to do is I had to splice it, right? So here I've got two reds coming in and one red going out. And the one red that comes from the JAMA harness comes in. Let's just pull this out here. Right? So one comes from the JAMA harness, one goes out over to here, and then another one goes out over to here. So theoretically, if you're playing, uh, you could use either that side or that side. So yeah, somebody could walk up and kind of mess you up if they touch one of the buttons or touch one of the controllers. Um, but it's still going to work, right? So I basically spliced them together here for player one and spliced them together over here for player two. And I just wanted to show you that. I also want to show you the speakers while I'm at it. Um, basically uh, for the speakers, you've got uh, these two wires, right? These two white ones come out of the JAMA harness right there. And then what I did was I plugged them into this speaker, but I also spliced it right there. It kind of looks kind of blurry, but hopefully you can see that. Spliced it right there, and then they go over to this speaker as well. So it's not really stereo per se, but you have two speakers and that gives you at least two speakers of sound and it sounds a lot better. One thing I did find out worth noting and I haven't figured out how to use it yet um, there's actually an audio jack right here for stereo so you can actually have stereo sound coming out of here with this four prong audio jack I just haven't done it um, with all these classic games uh, I don't know, it, these two, the way I have it wired it sounds pretty good and then the SD card I want to show you, right? So this is the SD card extension cable, right? So this plugs in here, and then it goes over, and then I've got it mounted right there. Hopefully you can see that. Now the hole is tight enough where I don't actually have to put a little strap over it. Uh, it's really, really tight, so I got it jammed in there, and it'll be just fine. Sometimes if it's a little looser, depending on how on the cut you can just put a little uh, strap over it and strap it down and you know, kind of tighten it to the bottom but uh, see if you can see that there and then what that does is it allows you to pull out the SD card might be too tight All right, uh, I can't reach it so I'll have to adjust that but basically you'll be able to pull that SD card right out of there and then of course this is the test switch which uh, I don't have wired yet Right, so that'll, uh, oh yeah, actually I do have that wired. <laughs> Forgot. So there's the test switch. The hole was a little bit too big on this one. I had to put a little tape on it, make sure it stays in there. I'll probably put black tape on it. But uh, these two just come off of the uh, JAMA harness. This is just a ground. And then this is the test switch wire. That'll get you into the menu system. So, and then the next step will be to run all the ground wires. And, you know, this is the ground, this is the bundle of ground wires that come uh, off of the one wire 
right here off the JAMA harness. There's all kinds of ground wires that come off. And basically we just go, you know, from here to here to here to here. And it's just this one daisy chain all the way through. So if I run out, I'll just splice it because basically down there I hacked up another JAMA harness to get all the cables. I mean, they're like 10 bucks a piece, so it was worth it um, just to, so that I could have plenty of these and I didn't have to wire these or put these on. It was a lot easier because I already got enough wiring to do as it is. So um, I got a whole other thing of ground wires right there. So that's the progress. Oh, one last thing before I go any further. Uh, I went ahead and wired this. I just wanted to show you, right? So this comes out of here and that's what it looks like. You can see that. So that's what it looks like right there. Oh, those are nice and nice and tight on there. We got the two the two green and then uh, two of the other AC and two of the other AC. So then that gives me the power for the monitor right here. And then right there will be a VGA cable, but I'm not worried about that right now. VGA cable will come across here and up into where the monitor is. But I always do that last, so I'll show you that later. Um, and I am getting close, so I'll be back once I get the ground stuff on there and show you that. Until then, bye. Okay, I'm back with the last um, bit that I've done here. Just uh, wanted to show you real quick. Um, I did get the VGA cable in here, so it's just a regular VGA cable that would go to the monitor. And uh, basically I just uh, bundle it up here and, uh, and run it over here. So I give myself enough slack to get to about right here on both of these so that if I got to pull the monitor out I can kind of just set it up um, you know and work on it if I have to get in here and everything so you, one of the things you just kind of got to give yourself enough slack you can kind of see that you know I've got everything wired but I've got all three control panels you know all out uh, very close to the machine uh, you know kind of propped up on boxes here but it's all to the point where you can just pull the panel off and sit it down on the table to get in there and work on it. So you just got to give yourself enough slack. So then, uh, the last thing that I did was the uh, with the ground, right? So I ran uh, the one ground over here, right? So then the ground wire goes here, and then it just did like I said, just daisy chains. So it just bops through here. And then I went ahead and just uh, spliced it here because I didn't want any more of these yet, right? So then I just ran the black cable over here, spliced it again. Um, and I don't normally do that, but because I had so many, I wanted to just not waste these, right? So then I just spliced it here, and then I just daisy-chained all the way around to here. And it just so happened that this was the last one, right? So I just went ahead and just left that. And then I had another ground wire coming out of here. So if you can see that, I mean, you can see all those black wires coming out. Those are all ground wires. Um, all the black ones are ground. So I used another one, and then I just spliced it here, and then I added, I only needed six more, so I just added six more and spliced them in, and then I just cut that off, which is fine. You can cut it off. So really, it's just the ground wire. Now, one last thing I wanted to note is, is that uh, I'm obviously going to do a, a full test and everything here eventually, but you may be wondering, well, why is he not putting in that you know trackball that he was doing? Right, I had this this trackball that I've been testing. Well, one of the things is is that for this particular cabinet that I've already built, it's too thick. I can't get it in here. Um, it, it's really close, but I need to make this thing about an inch taller. Um, which is doable, right? You know, we're at four and a half inches, not even, four and, a, four and a quarter, so if I went to about five and a half, you know, it would bring it up a little bit. And that would be okay, especially for a trackball. But the other thing is, is that the trackball is really not designed for cocktail. So I thought, well, hey, we're going from cocktail, and then we're going to just flip this switch, right? That's the goal. Flip the switch, go into the menu, which is right there, within... 10-15 seconds we switch it to horizontal and then boom we've got the horizontal games and that's awesome well I figured well why not just switch it to upright right because there's three options there's cocktail horizontal and upright well if I switch it to upright 
Well, then I could have put it on player one side. And the way the SD, Arcade SD works is, is that if you go to, say, Centipede, let's just say you got, go to Burger Time, well, it uses the joystick. If you go to Centipede, the board knows that you're going to be using a, a uh, trackball. Well, the trackball is actually hooked up to the player two inputs, right? Well, the problem with that is, is this trackball is actually hooked up to uh, power all the time. It actually gets hooked up to this 5 volt. And the problem with that is, is that it leaves the circuits open. And I don't know if I'm using the right terminology, but the circuits, um, you know, the, it, it, it open and closes. Well, it leaves it open all the time. So then the problem is, is that if you, you know, you can't hook it up this joystick and this trackball at the same time, if that makes sense. Because it just starts freaking out, right? The joystick's freaking out because it thinks all the switches are open. Um, so that's why I'm not putting a trackball in this. I really wanted to try to do that. There is still another option where I can um, find a little switch so I can switch the trackball on and off. Maybe on the next one I'll be able to do it. Um, but uh, on this one, I wouldn't be able to do it anyway because, like I said, it's just not tall enough. So if you were thinking about trackballs, as I was, because I really wanted to make this the ultimate, um, and the ultimate would be to have another trackball, uh, that'll have to be the next one if I can swing that. So anyway, here is the finished electronics. Uh, if you have any questions or any comments on any of this stuff, uh, please do let me know. And I will uh, come back with, I know this was a long one, but I did get into the details. I hope I got into the details enough. Um, and for some of you out there, hopefully it wasn't too much. But as you can see, um, I'm ready to start testing. I will let you know what happens. Uh, I'll get the part three in here with uh, the actual gameplay uh, once I get it all back together and working. And uh, until then, game on.